are wake up calls for Africans. So that when we see how the West in particular, and Washington in particular, uh, is wooing Africa, um, what are the concerns that Africans should be having? So what is the US and the EU doing towards the Russians that we could easily think, well, if they can do it to Russia, they can do it to us. The first thing that they did was to seize Russian assets uh, in their countries. Again, if they can do it to Russia, they can do it to us. So foreign reserves of the Russians uh, in the EU and certainly in the United States were seized. Um, of course, one of the clever mechanisms that uh, President Putin then put in place was the fact that he said that if you're going to buy anything from us, let's move towards rubles. And I think that that certainly does throw them off key quite a bit, substantially, because the US dollar has been the mode of currency, international currency, mm -hmm. up until now. The second thing that they did was, of course, the withdrawal of the SWIFT payment system for the Russians. The third thing was to force cap, a cap on Russian oil, and thereby once again reiterating this kind of hegemonic role that they play in the world of being bullies, You're either with us, Trump said, or you are against us, and if you are against us, we're going to slap you with uh, tough uh, measures and conditions, and we will withdraw instruments such as a Goa. And then the fourth thing was um, the development, our development of an alternative payment system. So I think that certainly when looking at this, um, the wooing or Washington's woo of Africa, I think that these all come into play. One, that Africans must know what they want in a multipolar world, because if we don't, um, uh, we are going to be caught up all the time where the wind goes. Um, and, and I think that somebody before used the, the term checkbook politics. Um, but that in determining that African interest, we must put our own people first. Um, and then just finally to, to again um, commend the note on the cessation of hostilities. I think that's a given, uh, but sometimes it's not obvious. And the importance of the non-aligned movement. And then finally, the point that I made quite considerably at the earlier seminar was the question of African capacity. The Chinese uh, Liu Haifan, who is at Peking University, complains about this all the time in our world. We don't, the Chinese want to come, they want to engage, but the Africans don't have capacity. Either to engage uh, in the sense of what the Chinese are offering, or in the sense of actually supplying the Chinese market. So if we are going to talk about uh, beneficiation, whether we are going to talk about the manufacturing that you are talking about, it's precisely because we don't have that manufacturing capacity to respond to the Chinese market. I do believe, I might have said this before, that any product can work in a market that is 1.3 billion uh, people strong as the Chinese market is. So any product, your product will never fail. How your product is going to fail is that you won't be able to keep up with the demand. So my friend asked for rum, whether you can export rum to China. I said, of course you can. But just remember, you're going to have to start off with at least, what, 100 million meters of rum. Because that's what they want. And can you meet that capacity? So that is the, the capacity issue. Certainly is, a, is, a, is an issue. Um, and that we need to see, take seriously as Africans the capacity to plan, the capacity to engage. I mean, for example, another quick example is that when uh, Hu Jintao was here in 2007, he sat down with President Mbeki. The study did an analysis of what were the, 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 the Chinese saying they will give us and what were we asking for. Um, and what we were asking for was agriculture and mining. What they were saying was capacity, jobs and skills, poverty alleviation. So their thinking and the thinking of the Chinese is just at so much a higher level than where we are and what we are dreaming of at the moment. And so we must increase that capacity. And I think that that is where centers such as this place become so important because you'll be able to plug into that capacity and hopefully these centers, since my research, has been able to feed into Durko much more, more 
than when I did when I was doing the research. Thank you very much, and thanks very much. Mm.